spin back to the 15 and we'll get there. First and 10 for the Blue Devils, Tommy, not the best of field position when you're trailing by 28 points. And John, uh, what's the feel you get on the sideline, both from the Blue Devils and from that Lebanon crowd? Well, it's pretty quiet here, Tommy. Uh, a lot of the crowd already heading out. Uh, although it is just now going into the fourth quarter, it's kind of silent over here. We need to get a good drive sustained here to get this emotion back up on the sideline. That's going to do it for the third quarter. Lebanon trails Riverdale 31-3. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after this break. Back at Horace Jones Field, 31-3 is your score. Riverdale leads Lebanon. The Blue Devils have it first and 10. High formation behind Reader. Cherry a wing on the left side. He'll turn. Counter Trey Sellers tries to bounce it outside. And goes nowhere except backwards, Tommy, back to about the 11-yard line. John, you're down there on the field. Those Warriors get to the point of attack before we can get there. Tommy, it's uh, obviously not going to be outside on either end. Uh, the Warriors are so quick. Uh, all their defensive uh, linemen, linebackers, and D-backs are all quick, uh, well-conditioned, and they hunt the football. Lebanon has had very little success running the football all night tonight, and that has not helped this situation. Sellers is out. Stafford is the tailback, gripping a wing on the left side. He'll just give it up the middle to Grissom. He will spin forward up to the 14-yard line. He gets three of those four that Sellers lost back. We'll bring up third down and 11 for the Blue Devils, Tommy. Stop by number 70. Substitute for the Blue Devils. Once again, checking in comes Sellers. Now coming in with the play comes Jeff Clemens. So Stafford out of the football game. Sellers looks like he will return to the tailback spot. Third down and 11 for the Blue Devils. High formation. Clemens to the left side. Reader. Rolls to his right, wants to throw back on a screen as Griffin did a good job of catching it. But Tommy, the speed of the Riverdale Warriors comes up and busts up the screen. Try the screen back across the field to the slot back, Joel Griffin, trying to let our quickest man get his hands on the football. But Riverdale just pursues so well. They were fooled for a moment, but uh, great speed can make up for some indecision as the Warriors have forced Lebanon to punt and they mass nine players on the line of scrimmage. Duke and Bryant stand at their 44 of Lebanon. Now two more players for Riverdale drop. Tressler in punt formation as he gets rid of it. Duke circles under it, calling fair catch, and he will take it at the Lebanon 38, and they will go on offense first and 10 for the Blue Devils at that point. 38-yard line of Lebanon. The spot is into the ball game for the Warriors. They have yet to send a quarterback out in Tommy. They will send out the freshman, number seven, Eric Locke, who most people in this town will tell you is better than Brian Davis. He's got a great pedigree. I'll tell you about his father after this play. First and 10, lock your quarterback. He'll run down some of the Warriors in just a moment. Turns, gives it to the fullback straight up the middle. That's going to be Jonathan Martin. As <laughs> Tommy Jade Sellers uh, went back and told Mr. Locke, welcome to Tennessee football. Locke, a freshman, play, grew up playing junior high football in, uh, gr grew up playing junior high football in Cookville, where his father, Juicy Locke, was a standout football player for the Cavaliers and went on to play went on to play at Memphis State University. He got a job here in Murfreesboro, and now the Locke family making their home here in the Riverdale zone. Second down and nine for Riverdale. Five men on the line for the Blue Devils. Locke, straight drop, looks across the middle, unloads toward Griffin, and it is incomplete, Tommy, and I think he had a little bit of extra pushing with Pitt down on that left sideline. They isolate Griffin, 
who's the nephew of Don Griffin, who's playing in the NFL for the 49ers, isolate him in man-to-man -man coverage with Damon Pitt, and it's a foot race, and Lebanon can't win that one. Locked through it on the money. A beautiful throw, and Griffin just dropped the touchdown. So into the game at quarterback. Up. Nope. Lock still in there. Bryant to the left. Alvin Duke, the starting backfield, and Smith are in there on third and nine. Lock straight drop, throws, hits Bryant. He makes a spin move on Pitt. Goes by him, 25-20. C pushes him. He won't get him. Touchdown for the Warriors, Fernando Bryant. That's what speed will do to you. It'll kill you. They get you in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the short route. They take a seven-yard pass play, and they turn it into a long touchdown, 24 yards. The quickness of those Riverdale receivers in the open field, it's just you're, there's no way to win when those guys have got you one-on-one. -on -one. Miller into the ball game to attempt the extra point. Snap is high, kick is up. It is good. 8.45 remaining in the ball game. Riverdale 38, Lebanon 3. We'll take a break and be back with more action right after this. 38 yards this time. It only takes him three plays. Fernando Bryant from Eric Locke. He, he, Locke throwing his first touchdown of the night. This one to Fernando Bryant for 37 yards. Miller with the extra point. There's still 8.45 left in the game. It's now Riverdale 38. 11 and 3. Sam Terry had a good point during the break. It looked like that Coach Rankin put his starters back out on the field after the borderline late hit by Jade Sellers on the freshman, Eric Locke, and then he goes up top for the touchdown, maybe trying to make a statement here as they lead with 8.45 to go in the game. Knox to kick off. It is a line drive kick. It will bounce. Seal take it at the 11. 15 has some blockers up to the 20 off one tackle and to the 25 yard line we'll go Ron C on the kick return Alvin Duke down there as well as Ryan Maloney so first and 10 for the Blue Devils their own 24 yard line 837 remains in the ball game Tommy is this a good time to start talking about next week uh, I think it would be a pretty good time Sam next how, week how about we start talking about the next two weeks that sounds good We'll do that a little bit, folks. We don't have much left to talk about tonight. <laughs> First down for the Blue Devils. I formation behind Reeder. Four-man line for Riverdale. Straight drop. Wants to throw. Pump fake. He's going to go deep for Clemens, who tries to make a circus catch on the sideline. Just a little bit overthrown. Yeah, that one goes out of bounds. And, Terry, didn't you talk a little earlier? Reeder's not having one of his best nights. You're right, Sam. He's now 2 of 11 trying to throw against a very athletic and very fleet Murfreesboro Riverdale secondary. So second and 10 for the Blue Devils. High formation behind Reader. He will turn, gives it to Griffin who's the tailback. 25 is tripped up at the 26 yard line as Bryant came up to push him, but it was Larry Floyd, the linebacker, who tripped him up. And, Tommy, that's a, a little different alignment than we've seen some this year. Sellers at the tailback spot for, excuse me, Sellers at tailback most of the year since about the third game on. And Griffin now getting some snaps at the uh, dotting the I in that Lebanon I formation. So it'll be third down and a long seven. For the Blue Devils, Griffin, your tailback. Grissom is the fullback. Two wide receivers on the right side. Now Carson is up, out on the left. Reader, straight drop, play fake to Griffin. He's going to go for it all to Carson as it is intercepted by Alvin Duke. 40, 45, and is taken down at the 49-yard line of Riverdale by Jeff Clemens where the Riverdale will go on offense first and 10, Tommy. Alvin Duke on the year with three interceptions. Now make that four. Is there anything this guy can't do? The ball underthrown just a little bit, and Duke reacting to the football peels back and makes the grab. Now Riverdale going pretty much exclusively with their second unit offensively against the Blue Devils. It'll be Locke at the quarterback position, your fullback, 
It will be Jonathan Martin and the tailback, Carlos Tig. Lock turns. He will give it to Martin, the fullback, to the 46-yard line of Levin and a five-yard gain. And Tommy, we were we said we were going to talk about the next week or so. Next week at home against Beach, which is a big game, we'll decide who's third and fourth in the region. That's exactly what that game will do. Uh, we don't know the outcome of tonight's River, uh, excuse me, Beach Mount Juliet game. The loser of that game is pretty much eliminated from the playoffs. We need a win next week against Beach to finish third, so we won't have to play the number one team out of Chattanooga. Second and five, lock toss sweep to Tig left side. 45 has some room. 40 and one step away, Tommy. C tripped him up, or he could have gone for six. Man, oh man, the second string tailbacks fast. Tig gets out on the corner in a hurry, and this kid is not very old, just a sophomore, 5'9", 145. He got to the corner in a hurry, and I was telling Terry, Sam, during one of the breaks, it's not good when your free safety's having to make a lot of tackles, and I'll bet you Ron C. has upwards of 15 tackles when we do the tackle chart over the weekend. First and 10 for Riverdale, the 38-yard line, 11 and Offset backs for Riverdale. Now they'll switch to an I formation. Lock turns, wants to run the option. He's got room, 35, 30, bounces outside of C, has some speed, and he will score as the Warriors put another one in the end zone. Eric Locke, it looked like a busted play. The fullback perhaps went the wrong way. Uh, so what? <laughs> Here comes Eric Locke on the